here now I'm going to tell you about how we can follow our goal to reduce inflammation and how we can have different types of microbiota therapies and how they can help. I'm going to highlight uh, a number of different microbiota treatments that are showing promise. And uh, this, uh, uh, this data is now that I'm showing is uh, from a great review from the Xavier Group. And I will talk about different therapies and explain whether they have a direct or indirect effect on the microbiome on the gut metabolites. So these are the products that uh, bacteria make and release into our gut, and as well as whether it reduces inflammation directly or indirectly. And here you can see the key is that the, the direct effects are in dark green versus the indirect ones are in light green. The first step uh, is really what is uh, the current standard treatment for affecting the microbiota is changing uh, internal nutrition. And internal nutrition generally refers to any method of feeding that causes the gastrointestinal tract to uh, uh, deliver the, the caloric requirements that we have. And in terms of the, the gut microbiota, really the emphasis is on non-processed foods. And foods that we often talk about the Mediterranean diet, so foods that will really have a, a high content of fiber as well as a, is a well-rounded uh, type of diet. One of the things that uh, is also talked a lot about and is uh, currently in a lot of critical trials is uh, this idea of transplanting microbes. So fecal microbiota transplantation affects directly the gut microbiome and as well as the gut microbiome metabolites. And it's really the transplant of the microbes from a healthy patient person to a patient. There's a, a really great talk about this uh, in, uh, um, in one of the, the Gutsy Learning Series talk uh, regarding fecal microbiota transplant. So I'm not gonna talk a, a lot about it. Um, it's showing promise but it's also showing challenges. In, uh, in some of the ways that uh, we've seen it work very well, for example, against uh, Clostridium difficile, it can be really targeted and work very strongly. But again, because IBD is very heterogeneous, it seems to have uh, required specific uh, ways of, uh, of working. So we are also gonna talk about how, uh, with our own research uh, uh, from our lab, how we can think that we can make, make it better and make it more targeted. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, three other types of ways in which we can influence the microbiota. And these are things that you probably have heard uh, a lot about. Uh, these are the prebiotics, the probiotics, and the postbiotics. So these are things that have been tested uh, either in animal models uh, or even in clinical trials. And there's a, a lot of buzz about uh, pre, pro, and postbiotics. And uh, a lot of what you'll find on the shelves of the supermarket is not very likely to have been thoroughly tested. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time uh, telling you about uh, what, uh, what you really need to know about them. So prebiotics are specialized fibers. They often also come as supplements. A key point here is that uh, whether you're feeding them to the microbiota is gonna work only if you have the right species to feed them to. And this can be problematic if uh, uh, for as industrialized uh, populations is we're starting to lose a lot of the species that, uh, I, as I was mentioning before, that we have evolved with. So it becomes really important that uh, uh, prebiotics are also in, uh, being targeted uh, with specific microbes that are going to be there and going to be able to uh, take advantage of the, this newly found fiber. And we're really working on trying to understand this. Probiotics on the other side are the actual bacteria. And one of the questions about uh, these probiotics is who should we really be adding? Uh, one of the challenges right now with uh, probiotics is that they're often coming from uh, species that have been uh, isolated uh, even sometimes decades ago, and they were isolated because they would grow easily. And there's still a lot of testing that needs to be done for species that will actually be uh, uh, positive, uh, not only uh, for specific uh, indications, but really broadly. And one of the things that is important is that also probiotics come in different uh, types and different flavors. So the type of probiotics that you'll find uh, in yogurts or kimchi, those are much more natural types of probiotics as opposed to what you'll find uh, in a probiotic pill. So for the, for the most part, probiotic pills have had mixed results. And uh, there's still, again, a lot of research that needs to be done to really uh, target what we call the mechanisms of trying to understand how they work and whether they can be beneficial for different patients. Postbiotics are what uh, the microbes actually make. 
And this is an area that is being really actively developed, trying to understand uh, whether there are specific molecules that are made by the bacteria that we can add uh, into people so that uh, even if they don't have the specific bacteria they're missing, they can help uh, alleviate the inflammation. So the important thing here is that, I, unfortunately, with the diseases that are very heterogeneous, such as IBD, it's really going to be hard to find a, a one-size-fits-all solution. And what we really need to, and where we're trying to go towards, is trying to understand how, for different patients, how these different uh, uh, probiotics or prebiotics can, uh, can really make a role in uh, reducing inflammation. Another type uh, of uh, microbial ther therapy is targeting the microbial foes. So there's uh, some bacteria that tend to uh, not respect the boundaries between uh, uh, ourselves uh, and uh, our, our gut uh, um, digesta. And these are bacteria that try to uh, make it through the intestinal lining and uh, cause a lot of inflammation. So uh, for example, an example of this is uh, adherent invasive uh, Escherichia coli. And uh, there are ways in which uh, the attachment can be reduced. And so there's uh, a lot of therapies that are being developed right now to try to prevent uh, this inflammation caused by specific pathogens. Uh, 